My passion for cooking started when I was about 18. Um, it wasn't really a normal route into cooking. Um, I just got really, really into cooking at home. I just moved out of home for the first time, was living alone and basically just started to cook for myself just to sort of as a hobby really. Um, and then as time went on, I realised I actually really, really enjoyed it. And I was in a job that I wasn't enjoying at the time, working in an office and it wasn't really going anywhere and I thought that it'd be something I could pursue a career in, so I did. So the concept of the restaurant is strong women. The restaurant is named the PEM after Emily Wilding Davison, who was a prominent suffragette and her nickname was PEM, so when she used to sign letters to her parents, she'd always sign it off PEM, which is where the name and the logo both came from. I think it's important to celebrate women, especially in hospitality, as there's such a disparity between the amount of men and women in the industry, both in the kitchen and front of house. So we want to celebrate women and empower women and bring women in and show them that they can achieve anything they put their mind to. I think the PEM reflects my beliefs and values um, in that we spend a lot of time training the younger members of the team and even the more senior members of the team to work well, to empower each other, to respect each other. And we're trying to create this lovely culture of respect where everybody supports each other and brings one another up along the way. So it was really important for me to have a female focused leadership team. Obviously we're not discouraging men to apply, but I think for me, it's really important to empower women and give them opportunities that they might otherwise not get the chance to have. Uh, I'm currently writing a memoir, which is called A Woman's Place is in the Kitchen. And that's going to be sort of the story of my life, um, but also a call to action of what I think we can do to change the industry and make it better and more gender balanced. So the restaurant is situated smack bang in the middle of Westminster. So we're really close to St James's Park. We're super close to the Houses of Parliament, Parliament Square, Westminster Abbey. There's a lot of history around here. And I think we took that history and used it in naming the restaurant and it's nice to be immersed in the middle of all of that political history as well. well chef Sally is the first female chef for, for whom I'm working and I will say the main difference uh, that I've found so far is that is, um, she creates a very inclusive, very relaxed uh, atmosphere. So it helps definitely to perform at our best. So I will say that my favorite element of working with Chef Sally is the fact that she's a, yes, she's a young chef, but she's already very well known, very well established and respected in the, in the industry. So you feel definitely a sense of pride working for her, but as well a sense of responsibility to deliver the best service possible at uh, every occasion. And uh, as well, the, uh, attention to the sustainability, to the seasonality, which is an aspect as well that is very appreciated by our guests. Hi, my name is Leticia Keating and I've been with the PEM since its opening. Hi, my name is Sara Govea. I've been working at the PEM since the opening. She's very resilient. She's such a big advocate for positive change and a very big advocate for women in the kitchen. First of all, she's a great chef. She uh, is a really good leader. She allows you to express yourself and she's Human to human, that is important. That kind of connections are important. What the PEM means to me in three words is inclusive, nurturing, and ever evolving. So working at the PEM is very feminine, indulgent, and elegant. So mushroom souffle with a Berksall Chantilly cream and wild mushrooms. So this dish is basically inspired by the forest floor, it's inspired by autumn, it's inspired by all the lovely things that come into season in this time of year. You've got loads of different wild mushrooms available and they're all equally delicious in their own right, so we really wanted to celebrate that. I think with a vegetarian starter, a lot of people fall into the trap of doing the same things over and over again. So we wanted to do something that was delicious but quite light, so moving away from pastry and bread based items and this we came across the idea of the souffle we finish it with a Berksville chantilly cream so it's rich creamy it's kind of got that salty umami flavor from the cheese there's a lot going on there so it all really melds well together once it's all on the plate so we've got roast fallow deer 
with some fermented red cabbage, blackberries, beetroot and some red leaves. So again, this dish is a real celebration of the winter. Fallow deer comes back into season sort of mid-September. Um, we get our fallow deer from a company called Deer Box um, and it's wild venison in the Cotswolds. Um, venison is something that is really close to my heart and I've cooked an awful lot of game over the years. So I think it's very important to have it on the menu when it's in season. It's literally the most sustainable meat you can get in this country and I think everybody should be eating more of it. And it just so happens it is delicious as well. Um, we serve the venison with the fermented red cabbage because it's got a really nice acidity to it, which then gets fried in butter. So it's kind of, again, that butter acid balance. Um, the venison is a very lean meat, so it does need some fat to cut through and help balance the dish. So we put some smoked bone marrow through the sauce, which gives it a real lovely luxury velvety richness. And then they've got on the plate, you've got some raw um, red leaves. So you've got some gramolo, and then you've got some pickled blackberries. So that gives it a little sharp burst of acidity. And then you've got the freshness from the leaves. So all together, the dish should balance very well when it's together. So the dessert is my take on a lemon meringue pie. So it's lemon meringue with some caramelized white chocolate and a yogurt sorbet. One of my most vivid memories of Sundays when I was growing up would be making lemon meringue pie with my mum, whisking the egg whites, licking the beaters for the sugar. I think it was something that we always used to do pretty much every Sunday if we weren't having chocolate cake. So it was kind of in between the two. Um, so I kind of wanted to do like an ode to that. You've got a lovely lemon curd, you've got the biscuit element, and then you've got the torch meringue. So it's got all the wonderful flavors there, just done in a bit of a more elevated style. I think food for me, and especially desserts, is all about nostalgia. And I think there's nothing better than when you take a spoon of something and it takes you back to a particular period or memory in your life.